Hi everyone. Good morning. At the outset, I wish to thank NWIS, Environmental Information System, Environment Management and Policy Research Institute, Bengaluru, for having organized this international virtual conference on environment impact assessment and giving me this opportunity to present my paper, EIA, a statutory tool for sustainable development. Among many themes, I chose EIA notification and regulations. Myself, Vidyada Durgekar, an ex deputy commandant, Indian Coast Guard, auditor and assessor of environment, health, safety, quality, social accountability, and sustainability, audited corporates in India and abroad, authored three books along with poetry collections. Sustainable development is a development that meets the need of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to develop their own needs. We don't have to sacrifice strong economy to have a healthy environment, said Dennis Weaver, the American actor said. Having taken over this environmental as it is, environment as it is from our earlier generation, it's our duty to maintain it as it is and hand it over to the next generation being the trustees because of which we need to see that whatever activities we do in the form of development, we do not destroy it or impact it irreversibly. So precautionary approach is essential in everything what we do. EIA was first mooted by US EPA during the year 1970 to integrate environmental principles in decision making. It helps government as well as project proponents to evaluate the project's signatures or impacts on the environment in advance. EIA is based on the precautionary principle. It was adopted by UN General Assembly and then Rio Declaration followed by Kyoto Protocol. Principle 17 of Rio Declaration 1992 states that environment impact assessment as a national instrument shall be undertaken for proposed activities that are likely to have a significant impact on the environment and are subject to decision of a competent national authority. In India, EI notification was issued under the provision of subsection one and two of section three of Environment Protection Act 1986, sub rule three of rule five of the Environment Rules 1986. EI notification was issued on 4th May 1994, 10th April 1997, 27 Jan 2000, and the present, which is in force, is 14th September 2006. We have this beautiful tool, EIA notification, but we still have problems. Wherever we have manipulated this EIA notification, the project has gone further and got stuck either under the scrutiny of the Supreme Court or the scrutiny of nature. I have given two examples here. One is the recent case of Maradu Apartments, which was constructed, completed, commissioned, getting all the clearances. The EC was obtained for resort and converted into residential project. Then fine, it was, for, it was found that it came up in the prohibited zone of CR set. Evaluating this project, Supreme Court stuck it down, ordering demolition, such a huge structure, having spent crores of rupees of the investors, home buyers, was brought to the ground, resulting in huge loss to project proponents as the home buyers and the home buyers. If the authorities, project proponents, and the home buyers had exercised a bit of caution and evaluated this project with respect to the regulatory requirement, probably this money could have saved, been saved. This is where EI is essential and required and need to be more seriously implemented to prevent such losses to the common people. Another case was the Tirpur dyeing chemical case. Tirpur was a hub of textile industry few years ago. It had many 
textile units using dyeing chemicals for the textile purposes where it was exporting textile to many countries to cut short the process they ignored the requirement of effluent treatment plant and pumped out the effluent sometimes to the river lakes as well as into the ground this effluent polluted the river as well as it came out from the ground into the flat fields which because of which the farmers rose against these industries government had to finally wake up and close these plants those textile industries which had effluent treatment plant established and treating the effluent completely survived this fiasco and those who did not have had to shut down permanently resulting in huge loss to them as well as loss of employment for the people once again the failure of these instruments like eia coming back home let's look into our own pollution of lakes it was there raised by media and people many committees were appointed it was found that people are pumping out industries and apartments are pumping out untreated or half treated sewage or effluent into the drains connecting to lakes and rivers polluting these having you know forming foam on these lake waters then to mitigate this problem government of karnataka issued notification dated 191206 saying that nobody will everyone will treat and no one will pump out the treated sewage anywhere else outside it's practically impossible under indian conditions as of now to use complete domestic sewage for domestic purposes whether it is treated or not when you make such stringent rules which are not practical people find it their own way to solve this problem so they secretly pump out at night into available uh, space like river or lakes and somewhere else as they find it convenient the problem here was we failed to realize what was the root cause there was no scientific method used to find out the root cause of this situation because of which apartments were issued notices of evacuation lockout as they do it in industrial pollution cases because our environment laws were designed and drafted for industrial pollution and not for apartment pollutions here also we find the project proponents and the authorities pass this project through eia scrutiny which requires under appendix 2 and 14 to inspect the plant and machinery and also the requirement of water act 171f and 171l2 were ignored and the, these projects get through this where there is a specific mention of inspection and evaluation of this plant and machinery of control measures there is no example where the design of sewage treatment plants effluent treatment plants were evaluated by the authorities to be adequate in design because of which this continued pollution takes place the builders who take consent and design and hand over this plants and go away leaving it to the gullible residents who don't know what they are taking over therefore it is necessary here that in the advanced stage in the first stage of in evaluation that is eia level or for issuing ec this technological aspects of control pollution control equipments or instruments need to be evaluated by competent technologists and also to avoid the industry like situation of using 33a a separate rules for apartment pollution is mandatory now considering this 
apartment pollution cases. And also when we look into the failure of EIA, mega projects like POSCO and Vedanta comes to our notice. Huge investment is essential for development, but failure due to mismanagement of project proponents or whoever it was, they failed to steady the impact on society as well as nature or environment and EIA was prepared without looking into it. Then finally, it failed the scrutiny of the society which woke up and resisted against these projects. If the project proponents of the consultants had taken this issue, care, studied this issue carefully and taken necessary steps to avoid the situation, probably this projects could have been handled and employment could have been given to thousands of people. The main problem here is clause 13 of EI notification 2006 permits the preparation of EI report by the accredited consultant. It's okay. But problem here is when the consultants prepare the EI notification, they do it for taking the clearances, not for solving the problems. Somehow they manage with the report and take the clearances and go away. The project executives remain disconnected with the problems on ground. So that is why there is this clause probably requires relook and this team should be headed by a very senior executives of the project's proponent and at least having 25% of the members of project group and they can take the help of consultants for preparation or expert advice from them and not totally depend on consultants because of which it fails. Most of the EI report is written like a story without specific data tabulated in form of table. They should have root cause analysis done. They should have. So I, failure of projects points out that EI notification 2006 has some inherent weakness due to lack of system of PDC approach and also process identified implementing technological controls for mitigation is missing. Identification of environment aspect and impact and risk assessment. Application of root cause analysis tools out to pinpoint the exact cause of environment impact. So I've given one example of root cause. And it's a simple why why analysis. Ask five whys, the answer, it, the, all the five questions should be connected with each other and should lead to the next question. Similarly, the tabulated uh, aspect impact evaluation also would help in AI along with the legal registers which are necessary to be complied with by the project proponents. One is the legal register aspect impact assessment. I've given the sample. What we find here is there is more reliance on the baseline data and sampling methodology without implementation of effective technological design to obtain the consistent sample results in significant environment impact subsequently failing the project. Technology of control measures is slightly not you know, much uh, emphasized in the whole project. The impacts are pointed out without having you know, identified the control measures. And EAC CEIA should conduct the evaluation of as built control measures designed under EIA requirements. It should be a mandatory one. And competence, competent personnel should evaluate it that it is suitable to control the signatures of environment effectively. The provision of section 171F of the Water Prevention Act 74 also need to be applied very strictly by the pollution control boards. Appendices two and four at uh, EIA level, EC level should be ensured for the correctness of the plants and the plants. So uh, organizations like SEAC, EIA and uh, pollution control boards need competent person who has understand the design of control technology. And also this officers need continual professional advancement is necessary for them to be abreast with the latest international techniques. 
concept of ISO 14000 need to be applied in the whole process of environment impact assessment. Finally, it is high time that India should think of having a separate ministry for environment as in developed nations. The EI notification 2020 has many sustainable provisions, unsustainable provisions, which can only harm the projects when rejected by judiciary, nature and society if allowed to pass through. Present EI notification 2001 is good, which may require few adaptation in session as in presentation. EI can help to develop sustainably, sustainably, facilitating the projects, advising the products, checking the projects, and allowing them through all correction after all the corrections are carried out. Both should go hand in hand to ensure sustainable growth. India needs growth, development, as well as it also needs to maintain the environment as it is. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If there is any questions, I am here.